We are heading to Sarajevo, the capital of Bosnia and Herzegovina. And we're gonna have one night there, which is obviously not enough, <laughs> but we wanted to get a taste of what it was like. So let's, let's head over. We're Karin and Jeremy, an average couple with average jobs and limited vacation time. When we take trips, we have one or two weeks, three if we're lucky, and we want to see and do as much as possible when we travel. Join us as we maximize our vacation time on mapping it. Well, we made it to Sarajevo, and now we're heading on a walking tour with Nino and friends. <laughs> We'll leave a link in the description below. Everybody describes Sarajevo as Jerusalem of the West. A small place with a lot of different religious temples. But that's how kind of the city began. Uh, we have 350,000 citizens in Sarajevo and we have basically today 85% Bosniaks or Muslims. We have only 3% Orthodox Christians or Serbs and we have 5% Catholics or a Croat. So it's kind of nice that numbers are changed definitely, but everyone kind of has equal equal voice. So you pretty much have, we are very lucky. We have so many holidays because every religious holiday is like a national holiday. So you have two Christmases, two Easter's and two Muslim holidays. Uh, the secret is we're not that religious, but we don't like to work all the time. So <laughs> This walking tour took us all over the city and gave a great overview of Sarajevo's history. We just learned that one of the best things that the Austro-Hungarian Empire did for Bosnia is bring the Latin alphabet with them. Before that, they were using the Arabic alphabet. The Latin alphabet had more books and literature associated to it than the Arabic alphabet at the time, and this allowed more people to learn to read. Sarajevo has a long and interesting history, but many people know Sarajevo as the place where Archduke Franz Ferdinand, heir to the Austro-Hungarian Empire, was shot in 1914, which was the spark that started World War I. So a very infamous place would be this bridge. This is Lati Bridge. Everybody knows this as a place where Franz Ferdinand was assassinated. It did not really happen on the bridge itself. It happened where you see the pink building, the museum sign. Under that basically street corner where you see a lot of people gathering, that is where a young man, uh, um, the assassin, Dagolo Princip, was standing when he shot and killed Franz Ferdinand. We're walking across the Latin Bridge. This is where Franz Ferdinand was assassinated and it was the shot heard around the world that started World War I. We just visited the oldest brewery in the town and it's interesting because it was built by the Ottomans back in 1864. It's even older than the church next door that was built by the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Also, the beer factory is one of a few vital resources that remained open during the entire siege of Sarajevo and provided fresh drinking water to citizens that were cut off from it. We just finished our walking tour of Sarajevo and we are in the old town and we're going to have chivapi for dinner. We've come to a chivapchnitsa and we're waiting for our food to arrive and hopefully it'll be very good. Well, we got our chivapi. It's a, a sausage made with lamb and beef, often served with onions and in a flatbread called some. Let's try it. Let's. Very good. Like a very well seasoned sausage. But because it's lamb, it's so much better than what we have usually. <laughs> onions are cumbersome to deal with. Yeah? Mm-hmm. There you go. Very good. All right, I'm gonna start with just a plain bite of chivapi. Oh my God. So savory, perfectly grilled and seasoned. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Makes me so happy. I'm gonna try it with the bread and onions now. It's got like, 
light fluffy texture inside. Here we go. <laughs> There's onions in there, I promise. <laughs> mm. Mm. I love onions. This is incredible. 10 out of 10 would recommend. <laughs> 10 year old me would not have eaten this. There are way too many onions. <laughs> but now, that's very good. After dinner, we wandered around the old town before heading back to our hotel for the night. So we're at the halfway point in our trip. And I thought it'd be fun if we went over the favorite moments we had and what we're looking forward to most. So let's start there. What's your favorite moment? Yeah, I think my favorite is probably still the Pleat Pizza National Park, mm -hmm. just because there were so many, um, so many waterfalls, such beautiful blue water. How about you? I think my favorite thing would be the wine tasting that we did at Kabbalah Winery um, in Istria. That. That was incredible. The food was great. The wines were great. Great experience. What are you looking forward to most uh, in the upcoming week? Yeah, still looking forward to Dubrovnik and the, the old city walls. Mm. What are you looking forward to? I think I'm most looking forward to most are. Yeah. Yeah. I have wanted to go there for a long time. The architecture looks really incredible. And I'm really looking forward to the food in Mostar as well. Yeah, the food should be very good. Yep, so that's what we're looking forward to. And hopefully it lives up to it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we got a little bit of Sarajevo left tomorrow, and then we're heading to Mostar. Good morning from Sarajevo. We're going to explore the city for a little bit. So this building behind me is the town hall. And when it was built, it used to be a neighborhood. And they asked, or they basically bought all of the houses that used to be there, but only but one homeowner didn't want to sell. So he said, you must take down my house and rebuild it on the other side of the river, exactly how it is. And so that's what this building is over here. And it's referred to as the Spite House. <laughs> We're walking through the Bashacharshia, which means old town in Sarajevo. It's a very big difference from what it was last night, <laughs> wouldn't you say? Yeah, not quite so busy. Yeah, nice and calm right now. We're heading to the fountain. Legend has it that if you drink from this fountain, you're said to return to Sarajevo in the future. So you're going to come back to Sarajevo then? I guess so. Cool, me too. <laughs> they call this Pigeon Square. I wonder why. <laughs> Did you have fun? Yeah, that was pretty fun. <laughs> This is the Ghazi Husserv Bey Mosque, built in the 16th century. Ghazi Husserv Bey was a rich Bosnian aristocrat who donated a lot of money to build a lot of the buildings in this city. Hmm. Um, Did you know that the uh, walls are six feet thick? <laughs> I know that now. Oh, well now you know. Also, the minaret was used as target practice during the siege of Sar Sarajevo, mm -hmm. and um, it was restored in 1996. We're at the meeting of cultures in Sarajevo. Behind us is the eastern half of Sarajevo and it was built mainly by the Ottoman Empire. And if we rotate 180 degrees, now behind us is the western half of Sarajevo and it was built mainly by the Austro-Hungarian Empire and it's quite a difference in architecture.
we are at Burak Junitsa Saj and we just ordered some Burak. We're getting the meat Burak and a potato Burak and we're excited to dig in. <laughs> So we got our burek. Yeah, our burek just came. This is the potato burek. So flaky and crumbly. I believe it's a filo dough packed with potatoes, possibly onions as well. So let's dig in. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> Good? Mmm. Mm -hmm. Better than the one in Pula? Mmm, definitely. 100% so fresh. The potatoes are really nicely cooked. There is a bit of onion in there maybe. Yeah, a little bit of onion. The phyllo, crunchy and soft and flaky. Mm, so savory and delicious. It's wonderful. I got the meat burek. Oh yeah? Yeah. You looking forward to it? Yeah. Have you ever had meat burek no, before? No, this is the first one. All right. So let's get a good bite. Find something tasty. Yeah. Oh. That is so good. There's definitely a little bit of onion in there as well. Mm. The meat is just seasoned perfectly. Ah. It's so savory. Mm. Is it even better? Mm hmm. Yeah, it has a nice freshness to it. Mm. So now that I think about it, the meat almost tastes like the, the meat you would have in a hot dish. And with this like sour cream sauce or yogurt sauce, can't quite tell what it is. Maybe it's both. It's just amazing. Now having tried the meat burek, I agree. It definitely tastes like the meat that you would have in a hot dish. For anyone that doesn't know what a hot dish is, it's what Minnesotans call a casserole. <laughs> Very good. And I'd probably say that the meat burek is probably my favorite of all of all the bureks we've had. <laughs> Very good. Mm. Mm. So savory. Mm. <laughs> very good. I love it. We just finished our burek. It's very good. We had two bureks and two cokes. And it came out to 1650 Bosnian marks, which is about $8.55 in US dollars. I'd say that's a pretty great deal. <laughs> and Julie? No. Yes! <laughs> Brad Pitt! No. Oh my god! Yes, yes, what about it? Madame, vanilla, chocolate, pistachio. Vanilla. Vanilla. Small, medium, big. Medium. Okay. No, 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 no. Where are you from? Minnesota. Minnesota. Oh, I love you. My name is Alejandro. Your name? Karen. Karen, you your. I love you, Karen. Go back, Karen. No, no, no. Thank you, Karen. I love you. Hello, hello. Turkish ice cream. What's the matter? Thank you. Bye, bye. Hola. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Hola. <laughs> That's the system. This is Turkish ice cream, and it's unlike any I've ever had before. Just watch how sticky and stringy this is. <laughs> what is it, mozzarella or something? <laughs> it's very good though. <laughs> We're on another Sarajevo walking tour, this time focusing on the siege of Sarajevo that happened in the 90s. Somehow, people thought they, that they were safe in this 
place. I mean, everyone saw the buildings around it, so you were thinking, no one can see you, we're all good. I mean, people started to come here just to talk to someone, to meet someone. That's how safe they felt. However, it was just pure luck. Uh, the third year of the siege, 1994, one mortar shell found the way to this place. It very obviously fell down here. This mortar shell killed 67 people and injured 150. This was unheard of by that time. But guess what? The next day, you clean up the best way you can and you move on. That's how you live at that time. It's all about survival. You don't really go emotionally through anything at that time. You just move on, adrenaline, survive, move on. Only when the war ended, that's when you really realize what happened here. So that is when two memorials were built. This is one called Sarajevo Rose. It's not the only one like this. I would say if you would, like if you will, if you will be walking around the central area of Sarajevo, you will see at least 10 of them. If it looks like a splatter of red paint, it means that a mortar shell fell there and actually killed somebody. Whether it is one person or 40 or 50 or 67, it, you never know. But it always is um, someone's last place. Today, you'll get memorials to remember, to learn something from this. And Rose is special. I kind of like them a lot because you don't really see them very often. When you step on one of them, you know, you, you kind of feel bad for a moment and then you move on with your life. And that's exactly how it's supposed to be. You should never forget the people that happened to them. But you do need to live your life. But it's a, like a silent reminder, which is, I like it a lot. There are many memorials, large and small, throughout Sarajevo that serve as reminders of the tragedies that happened during the war. The siege here lasted three years and eight months, and on an average day they would get hit by 200 shells of mortars. On the worst day in July 1993, they were hit by over 3,000. Wow, that's pretty brutal. Yeah. It's been almost 27 years since the siege ended, and while a lot of the buildings are repaired, there's still visible damage. You'll see a lot of uh, damage that looks like bullets, but it's actually shrapnel from the mortar shells and it takes time like all the glass from the windows was blown out and that was one of their top priorities is replacing all the glass in all the windows in all the buildings and now they're slowly re repairing all the buildings as well so yeah you'll see some damage it just takes time <laughs> don't let the possibility of seeing damaged buildings prevent you from visiting sarajevo chances are if this damage hadn't been pointed out to us we might not have even noticed if you come on this trip, bring lots of water if it's summer, prepare for a lot of walking, and tip your guide. <laughs> so what did you think about the tour? That was really cool. It's cool to hear all the history and all the kind of personal stories and stuff. Um, like there was a post office where someone had graffitied it saying, this is Serbia. And then a day later, someone came back and said, no, this is a post office, you idiot. <laughs> That's kind of, kind of funny. She puts a personal touch on, on the tour. Yeah. Yeah. So I think after that tour, I have a much better understanding of how the war started. So before, before the war, there was this country called Yugoslavia, and they were doing pretty well, and they're had a president for life, Marshal Tito. Some people would call him maybe a dictator, but everyone here just loves him, so he's president for life. And um, then he died in like 1980, because no one lives forever. And then they had maybe not the best run government, and it led to a lot of policies that had inflation and people were unsatisfied. Then there was rising nationalism amongst the six nations that made up Yugoslavia. People were unsatisfied with where Yugoslavia was headed. And so Slovenia broke away in 1991, declaring their independence. And then it set off a chain reaction with Croatia going next and um, Macedonia and then Bosnia. and. And when Bosnia declared their independence from Yugoslavia, there was a portion of the population that was actually unhappy with 
that they didn't want to leave Yugoslavia and that was the Bosnian Serbs. And so they decided to take action into their own hands and pulled together an army in less than a month. And then they took siege of Sarajevo. They surrounded the city of Sarajevo. And there's also wars in other parts of Bosnia. And um, basically the Bosnian Serbs were attacking everyone else trying to get some land so that they could create their own country and it led to a war that lasted three years and eight months. So this part of the walking tour had a lot of kind of difficult or heavy information to deal with mm -hmm. so a lot of a lot of death a lot of war which is not easy to talk about so we're gonna take some time to walk back to the old town right now it's about a three kilometer walk from where we are and we're gonna just reflect and decompress. Sarajevo has worked hard to rebuild the city after the war. It's a safe and rewarding place to visit filled with so much history. We had a great time on our walking tour and recommend taking the time to learn more about the places you visit. We wish we could spend more time in Sarajevo. One day wasn't enough, but now that we know how much there is to see in this city, we can't wait to go back and explore more in the future. Thank you so much for watching and we hope you stick around for our next adventure. We'll see you in the next one. And we have come to dinner. We just finished our... You eat a lot of things that 10 year old you would never have eaten. Like octopus and squid. <laughs> Escargot. Onions though. You drew the line at onions back yeah. then. <laughs> Did you press play? Yeah, this is a test run. This is a test run. You heard it here first. Do you know what year this happened? No. Okay. Go for it. It was the Austro-Hungarian. Yeah. Of it, right? Yep. What? So how am I starting? <laughs> they should bring this to the Minnesota State Fair. <laughs> It'd be like hot dish, hot dish pie. Hard to get on a stick, though. Probably. No, you could um, weave it onto a stick. I think. <laughs> <laughs>